Dala Moana, warrior. In my previous video, I showcased a cast on Ignite Poison Assassin that was just as likely to kill the instance as it was the enemy. I mentioned that I was working on a new build that would address the issues of the Forbidden build. This is that build. The goal was to make a cast on Ignite character as viable as possible, for as much content as possible, on a very small budget, by any means necessary. This means that I incorporated several already well-known mechanics into the build. In fact, large portions of this build have already been featured in Build of the Week. However, as a great man is about to say, it's not about what you use, it's how you use it. As in the last build, we are utilizing an Eye of Innocence unique amulet and two Ngamahu Sign unique rings to create and maintain a spellcast loop. While the last build achieved impressive poison DPS, most of it was locked behind what I will call the Crash Horizon. To avoid this, we will be using an Elementalist with 100% chance to ignite and will not use poison. We also won't focus on casting as many spells as our sockets can fit, because this is inefficient. Our goal is to create a spellcast loop that will sustain infinitely against a single target at the maximum possible rate. To achieve this, we will need to optimize our ignites per second. So, which spell causes the most ignites per second? I did the math, it's Firestorm. We can increase the number of ignites Firestorm causes by increasing its duration. Even without the helmet enchantment, we can achieve a duration of over 5 seconds, causing an average of 17 ignites per cast on a single target. Unfortunately, spells triggered by cast when damage taken share a global cooldown. This means that we cannot trigger a second Firestorm gem, even in a separate item. If only there was another, similar spell. The Whispering Ice Unique Staff grants a level 1 Ice Storm skill. It's basically equivalent to another Firestorm that has the added benefit of chilling enemies so they stay in our storms longer. Because it is a level 1 spell that requires level 33, we can link it to a level 1 cast when damage taken gem. And because it is a skill granted by an item, any support gems in any socket will support it, regardless of links. The Whispering Ice is normally used in intelligence stacking builds, but we only need about 300 for our purposes. Now we have a storm of ice and fire. We can't use another storm skill, unless we self-cast. With high enough cast speed, we can self-cast another Firestorm gem at the same rate as our triggered gems. This is a nice option to have, just in case we want even more ignites. Our video card is starting to cry, but we can't stop now. Storm spells are too inconsistent, and inconsistent healing will get us killed. This is why we also use Ball Lightning, which hits every enemy in its radius every 0.15 seconds. Fire one of these babies into a pack of enemies, and it'll keep you alive by itself. Now, we've actually gone a little bit too far. With this setup, large packs of enemies won't die quickly enough, and our instance will eventually crash. We need something that reliably clears packs. A level 20 cast when damage taken Blade Vortex setup does respectable damage, even without additional supports. This will kill the enemies closest to you, but not the whole pack. This is when we press our Weapon Swap button. In our Weapon Swap, we use two Obliteration Unique Wands. While these are equipped, enemies will explode when they die, which will proliferate through the pack, which will end our lag spike. Swapping weapons won't get rid of spells that already exist, so we can swap back and forth without interrupting our spellcast loop. Now that we can actually clear maps without crashing instances, we can finally fight bosses. We can simply firestorm them to death and face tank all their damage, but that's pretty slow. We need a way to deal tons of damage. The Rat Cage Unique Chest will convert a portion of the fire damage we take into physical damage. Vol Molten Shell will explode any time we mitigate any amount of physical damage. Vol Molten Shell has no cooldown! If we deal 10,000 ignites per second, Vol Molten Shell will explode 10,000 times per second. Vol Molten Shell can ignite and this will heal us and help with our spellcast loop, but it will not detonate a second time. Otherwise it would cause infinite explosions. So... How many explosions are we talking about? In ideal conditions, we can deal about 300 ignites per second to a single target. That results in 300 Vol Molten Shell explosions. Hmm... How much damage does each explosion do? <laughs> that is 1.22 shapers per second. Vol Molten Shell lasts for 9.5 seconds. That's 11.56 shapers per button press. Now is a good time to mention that Vol Molten Shell has 200% added damage effectiveness. This means that any flat damage we add to the spell will be doubled before damage calculations. With Abyss Jewels, we can scale our DPS to infinity and beyond! Now we have a build that has more healing than a pre-nerf Xerfi's build, and enough damage in one spell to kill every enemy in the game combined. But how does it work in practice? 
Can we actually steamroll the entire game? The answer is... It depends. This build is optimized to do damage against a stationary single target. The Shaper? Easy. Syndicate members? Easy. Most map bosses? Dead in one frame. Killed them in one hit. The trouble comes from bosses that teleport around a lot, or have lots of invulnerability phases. If you don't have a Soul Ripper flask, you'll need to constantly build up your Valmolten shell. And if they teleport around too much, you won't be able to hit them at all. But the biggest problem is latency. If the enemy spawns endless ads that you have trouble killing, you will lag. The longer you take to kill the ads, the longer the timescale will be slowed down. When you finally kill all the ads, the timescale will be increased to compensate. This means that if it takes you 30 seconds to kill the Chimera's minions, he will get 30 seconds of free attacks. As a result, this build has limited hardcore viability. So, bosses that have invulnerability phases, teleport around a lot, or have really strong ads, are out. You'd think that would rule out the Elder. You'd be wrong. I... crashed the Elder instance. I literally deleted the Elder from existence. I did it! I beat the game! If Elder doesn't exist, he can't corrupt the Shaper. I have circumvented Zana's questline. Hey Zana! I saved your dad! But really, you can actually kill him.